Uh, good morning, uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, uh, this is uh, a work very interesting, we think, because uh, it was from some problems, let's say, that we find in the construction sites, let's say. People not usually do how they should, how they would have to do. And uh, let's see. Yes, uh, we have done a lot of tests there, as I was saying, for almost 30 years there in Brazil. Plant of slabs, there, uh, big slabs. This was in Furnas, some work we did there. And uh, slabs with holes, openings. Slabs with eccentricity inside and outside. As they're uh, doing in German, some CFRP strengthening of punching shear slabs. Some pre-stressed slabs as well with shear reinforcement, a plant of wire for strong age and so on. And the uh, edge columns pre-stressed. And uh, yes, I should uh, just here to say that uh, we did all this work in Brazil, thanks in much to Professor Reagan, Professor Paul Reagan. He was dead last year. I was there in England for his funeral. I was his student in the 80s, and uh, he helped us a lot in Brazil. He was there for almost 10 times, and I sent students. Oliveira was one, stayed a year with him, and so on. And uh, this is a, a slab we did as well. This slab was uh, 200 millimeters thick. And we know that uh, this kind of reinforcement, of course. And uh, it's interesting because uh, we did some tests, of course, everybody has done. There is an ACI paper we did more than 20 years ago on that. And uh, we all know that shear reinforcement, the ideal shear reinforcement, uh, effective, of course, and requiring simple and easy workmanship. And we know that some are effective, but very difficult to install. And we know, of course, that there are some shear reinforcement that people even sell that is not so good as it pretend to be. And uh, we know that not uh, all of them are effective, nor simple or easy at the construction site. Most are positioned before the flexural reinforcement. And good anchorage sometimes is difficult. And do you know that for the, at, at the construction site, it would be more easy to put the shear reinforcement and then to put the flexural reinforcement on top. Of course, no right connection here. And uh, we, we know that. We know that uh, the reinforcement should be well anchored. Yes, on top there, at the bottom, and the codes say that. Taking here ACI, yes, there is no doubt that it should do right away ACI 318 and the ACI 421. And uh, more detailing by the ACI, how one should do, how should be encouraged. And, uh, but what was the problem? The shear reinforcement, not well anchored, have been used. I don't know if everywhere. I would like to hear from you after if you have found some things like that. Even as a support for the top flexural reinforcement, as I said, 
Of course, it's not uh, what people, oh, why not doing like that? It's easy. We speed up the construction, but of course we know it's not good. A positioning, a positioning the top flexor reinforcement becomes easier, Help, helps grouping series of shear reinforcement as well. Then we can put together and put the flexor on top. Of course, is against the good practice and codes. I'm not saying that uh, should be. But uh, then uh, there was this article from Spain, uh, a good article uh, from Caldente in 2013. And uh, they test there shear reinforcement not connected to the top nor the bottom reinforcement. Because he said, in Spain, some people do like that in construction sites. Uh, then, why not testing? I was, uh, I knew this before, but, uh, and then, oh, in Spain now, in Europe, oh, then some people else are doing that. And then I asked the students, oh, let's do some tests on that. And, uh, and this is a, another example, a very usable, let's say, uh, hook, let's say, to put the reinforcement on top. And when we were uh, talking about that, one of our colleagues, an uh, ex-student of mine, he said, oh, I was in a construction site elsewhere in, in, in Brazil, of course. Uh, some time ago, and they were using this as shear reinforcement. I said, oh, it's a problem, yes. Anyway, let's. And of course, uh, when we know the usual modes of punching failure, when there is shear reinforcement, close to the column, through the reinforcement, and outside. And of course, uh, I, I'm showing this because when we talk, <coughs> when we talk about uh, reinforcement not well anchored, we have another kind of failure. That is uh, a kind of splitting or delamination because it's not well connected, and then the it was uh, Andrade in Brazil had done some tests and then got this failure. And uh, Professor Reagan and Samadjan in 2001 had the same with this thing. And then we did uh, some 25 tests. And of course, what I expected, oh, the top would be the well anchored, then maybe top anchored, bottom anchor, anchored, and no anchorage at all. And then we did a lot of tests, uh, 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 more than 20. Uh, on the left there, fully anchored. Here, only the compression side at the bottom. On the left bottom there, only at the tension, and then not anchored. And uh, the results we had, they are about the same. They are not, of course, we did just a few tests, let's say. We should do more with other ratio of uh, uh, reinforcement with other kinds of stirrups. We did the cross one and uh, with another ratio of reinforcement for shear, for flexural. But uh, the first series we did, the best behavior, 10% uh, more, nothing. But was the shear anchored only at the compression side. And I said, it's wrong, let's do more for. And then the same thing happened. <laughs> no. 
And uh, of course, it's not new. We know that uh, the a complexion side is important because the failure surface begins there and so on. But I was uh, surprised that uh, this was a little, of course, it was constant because it was four series of that. But of course, we, we have to test more. The failure surface critical crack starts at the compression region, yes. Possibly the more important region for the shear reinforcement to be un anchored at all, yes. Uh, of course, uh, vertical displacements were not so different, but the, the well anchored on top at the bottom was the behavior apart from the load, but the, it presented more ductility, ductility. It was more flat. We, yes, enforcement, shear enforcement strains. You can see difficult, but it was about the same. Uh, concrete strains as well. A summary, the load was about the same. The worst was without any connection at all. Connecting the bottom reinforcement was a little bigger, and the other two about the same. We did a cut saw as well, and uh, have to see the further surface. Here is uh, five of the slabs are the ones that are in the paper. And here the, you see, if you see the surface are different, but uh, the ultimate load was not. We should now, of course, test with, as I said, with other shear rate of reinforcement, flexural, Detailing shear reinforcement and see what happened. Then other group of tests we did, another student. <coughs> These tests, because uh, our university is in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, in the middle of the country. These tests were done in the Amazon region, uh, in, in Pará. We have uh, a student, <coughs> sorry, we have a student there. And uh, it's very big slab there. And uh, the idea here would be to compare on the top uh, stud, double head stud that we know that work very well with another a kind of shear reinforcement that is a, a truss, well uh, prefabricated. This truss using as a kind of support, let's say, for the top enforcement, and then some hooks to try to help. Of course, uh, in this case, it was 20% less, of course, than the top one, because it's, it's the study is, we know work very well. And then uh, I say here because uh, at the paper we we put uh, twelve eight. It was the ones with I showed with closed stirrups, varying anchorage details. Four with profesh with a prefabricate a truss bar as shear reinforcement. The two shear reinforcement types investigated can work properly. And uh, of course, if it, well, it is interesting uh, because uh, the students, uh, they are always not happy when a code, for example, uh, gives a conservative results. 
and do we always put, look, code have to be on the conservative side. Because uh, in, in the, at the construction site at design office, they don't know, they haven't seen a test. Of course, that's good. And, uh, but uh, how a conservative, then we should discuss. And of course, because of that, we should know in details how to behave. Uh, worked, ACI present, of course, and should be uh, followed. Yes. We, at the test, we put a lot of highlights about that. About the slab is closed. Stirrups. About the same level of ultimate loading was obtained. 10% more, that is nothing, let's say. Of course, we did only one slab of each, but of course, we did five series. However, the stirrups detailing affected the deformation capacity before failure. With the slabs, with a fully accurate stirrups showing, in general, more ductile load displacement curves, as you expected. The ACI detailing provisions were shown to be necessary, of course, to assure adequate structural performance. The slabs with prefabricated truss bars, the best structural performance was observed for slab, that slab. Uh, for strength and deformation capacity, and close to that uh, reference slab with the studs. What is needed, let's say, to finish here? More tests, of course, to see if this really happens. And of course, the, uh, this would happen us to understand, because as someone showed here, since Nylander, 60 years ago, and uh, Mo Nylander, we are trying to find a model. Because of this, we are here inside of this room and uh, with a lot of young students here. In 10 years' time, another group will be here, maybe not me. And, uh, but uh, this would happen, would help, let's see, to understand more the behavior. Because uh, we are using finite element and a lot of numerical stuff. But of course, the ideal would be a good and sound method to understand what really happens. Because it is interesting. The, the, the results uh, Trevor uh, used, very good. For the Oliveira, worked very well for load in one way and for the other way. When the load was on four sides, then it's a 3D, then it makes it becomes more difficult. Anyway, slabs with more than 180 millimeter thick the slabs. We saw here in German some very nice thicker slabs. Different flexural and shear reinforcement ratios subjected to unbalanced moments, cyclo loading, etc. Edge and corner columns, of course, then would be very different because moment and uh, possibly the, res the difference in behavior will be steeper. An investigation of the anchorage at the, comp at the compression region. We know that's important, but uh, as I said. Yes, thank you. <laughs>